Assalamu alaikum. This is Mohammad Akboshan Khan, lecturer in English, Department of English, Adarsha College, Dinaspur. Today, I will take a class on old English, that is Anglo Saxon period. It is, uh, uh, th this subject is Honors second year, uh, History of English Literature. This subject is included in Honors second year, uh, Old English or Anglo Saxon period. Uh, I will today I will take class on this period and the duration of this period is 449 to 1, 1066 here is a picture here I am uh, presenting a picture before you the students here you can have a look uh, on the lifestyle of Anglo section period here some soldiers uh, they are having some shield and uh, Anglo sections the Anglo section were good warriors most of the time, they on the battle, they fight. They control most of England. The Anglo Saxon term. Anglo Saxon is a term used by the Strian to designate the Germanic tribes who invaded the south and east of Great Britain beginning in the early 5th century AD. The term is also used for the language now called all English is spoken and written by the Anglo section and their descendant in much of what is now England and some of southeastern Scotland between at least the mid 15th century and the mid 12th century. Here is the map. It's Britain. This is the map of Britain. And here the different tribes. Uh, the yellow one, yellow one is Angles. And the, and the blue one is Jutes and the red one is Sections. They, these three tribes, all, all of them uh, come from German. Early Anglo section life. Now, I will discuss about it. Early Anglo section life. The next invaders of Britain were the Anglo section next to Roman. Primarily, the Angles sections and Jews. These invaders were all Germanic tribe. Dispersal of the Britons. After the Roman left, the Britons who were here before the Romans and lived under their rule in relative peace were unable to protect themselves against their new invaders. To free the Anglo sections, the Britons fled to other parts of the island. Cornwall, Wales, and some way to Ireland. The reasons why the Angles and sections settled in Britain. To collect stones to build their hearts on, to use the better soil to grow crops, lands were often flooded, the land was warmer, to have the precious objects and goals, the rivers gave easy route in land. The Anglo Saxons took control of most of England, although they never conquered Scotland, Wales, and Cornwall. They settled in England in places near to rivers or the sea, which could be easily reached by boat. Anglo Saxon society, let's have a look on Anglo Saxon society, created highly organized tribal units, kingdoms. Tribes were ruled by a king chosen by a council of elders witten or a leader elected by physical powers and achievements. Many Roman buildings did become ruins though because no one bothered or knew how to repair them. Here is the picture Anglo-Saxon social hierarchy, kings, kingdoms, old men, free men, bondsmen and slaves. Slaves did have some minimal rights including the possibility of earning money and eventually buying their freedom then. In their own land, most anglo section were farmers. They lived in family group in villages, not cities. Since they lived close to the sea and big rivers, many anglo sections were sailors too. They built wooden ships with oars and sails for trade and to settle in new lands. How did anglo section live? Towns and villages, they settled down. 
the first anglo saxon villages were often named after their chieftain or leader of the village lived close to their animals to protect the animals and provide warmth lived in single family homes surrounding a communal hall and protected by a wooden stockade fence fun facts here we can also find uh, fun facts that did you know that it took about 18 trees to provide enough wood to build a section house the characteristics of the anglo-saxons fighters and warriors admired physical strength bravery loyalty fairness and honesty great love of personal freedom boastful willing to be cruel enjoy conflict swimming matches horse races banqueting drinking meat singing songs and storytelling also flirting a conflict of wits between two warriors where each praises his own deeds and belittles the others men were usually about 180 centimeter tall and women were usually about 168 centimeter most Saxon men were big and strong and they were also very active every day Saxon's teeth have lot of plague here you can see a picture Saxon teeth here you can see plagues uh, Saxon's teeth have lots of plague on them so this usually shows they did not own toothbrushes they did not own toothbrushes that means they did not use toothbrushes during that time their teeth were, were really known as being very yellow and horrible that means that as they did not brush the teeth the teeth were very yellow conical handles for little brushes have been found in the graves of section women that means conical handles for little brushes have been found in the graves of section women this might have been used for putting on makeup like eyeshadow or blusher combs made the bone were often found in women's grips these shoes they kept their hair neat and tidy women clothing here you can see a woman anglo section women wearing this uh, uh, some women women clothing some women had metal clubs at the wrist uh, at the wrist uh, they have metal clubs fastened to the sleeves of a simple blouse other women had on short sleeves they used to wear brooches at the shoulders brooches at the shoulders pinned two sides of a tubular dress together here is the dress metal clips belt a uh, simple blouse and this is brooches section women had other useful item hanging from a belt around the waist the belt rotated away but buckle survived lots of beads were often found across the chest the strings of beads were very pretty they were usually made of brightly colored glass role of women the wife of an earl or then supervised weaving and dyeing of clothes the slaughter of livestock the making of bread bakekeeping and the brewing of meat fermented honey they would work alongside men in the fields women inherited and held property married women retained control over their property men clothing here is the anglo section here is the picture of anglo section uh, soldier uh, men clothing uh, apart from skeleton there was usually only a buckle the belt had rotated away the, they sometimes find weapons too all ex, all sections bodies have been dug up in box box are very well this one is belt and this one is knife and this one is tunic and here is the shield we can see a shield weapons here now let's have a look the weapons which the english section people used to use during that period the is a picture sword uh, here, here you can see a picture of sword uh, the most feared anglo-saxon weapon 
द मोस्ट फेयर एंग्लो सेक्शन वीपन वॉज बैटल एग्स बैटल एग्स दिस दिस ऑन इज बैटल एग्स बट द मोस्ट प्रीसियस वीपन वॉज और शोट मोस्ट प्रीसियस वीपन वॉज शोट बट मोस्ट ऑफ दफ्रेट ऑफ दिस एग्स इट टूक आवर्स ऑफ वर्क बाई ए स्मी टू क्राफ्ट ए शोट दैट मीन्स इट टूक आवर्स टू मेक दिस शोट he softened iron in red hot fire twisted iron roots together and hammered the sword into shape the warrior coat the king had a small bodyguard of brave warriors who would die to defend him the warrior coat of the anglo saxons taught that a warrior must fight and die for his leader if he had to An Anglo-Saxon poem called "The Battle of the Maldon" tells the story of a battle in Essex in 1991 between English and invading Vikings. The English leaders allowed the Vikings to cross the from their camp for a fair fight. The English lost, but the poem still praises their heroism. Shaton who. In the 17th century AD, a king, it was surely no less, received a magnificent burial at Sutton Hoo uh, in East Anglia. A ship was hauled up from the river. A burial chamber was erected in the middle of it, and a stupendous collection of magnificent objects, gold and silver, brooches and dishes, the sort of state drinking horns. and a lair was set in the burial chamber now the helmet here you can see helmet of anglo saxon period the people used to wear this helmet the helmet has become a symbol of the certain who burial yet it survived as a mass of small pieces and was only reconstructed after years of pain staking work in the british museum laboratory here we see a photo of the excavations we are you see a photo of excavations in 1939 with the excavators here yeah, they are the excavators uh, with the excavators uncovering the chamber built at the middle of the ship and mr spritty the land owner and sponsor of the excavation is sitting with their with her friends in the background glory immortality only earned through heroic actions the goal was to be remembered after the death in songs and stories of his great deeds early anglo saxon beliefs here is about a religious picture religious belief this picture this light is about the religious uh, religious belief in roman britain many people had been christians the early anglo saxons were pagans much like the vikings of scandinavia they believed in many gods they believed in many gods uh, the king of the anglo saxon gods for example was odin a german version of the scandinavian god odin from his name comes our day of the week wednesday or odin's day other gods were tunor god of thunder frizu goddess of love tui god of war anglo saxons were superstitious they believed in lucky charms they thought magic rhymes for potions stones or jewels would protect them from evil spirits or sickness anglo saxon believes anglo saxon believes pagan polytheistic the early anglo saxons worshiped ancient germanic or norse gods odin or odin chief of the gods god of death poetry and magic freya odin's wife and goddess of the home tiu the god of war and the sky thinor thor god of thunder and lightning frizz or frisa frigga queen of the heavens the names of these gods survive today in our words tuesday wednesday thursday and friday the scops 
it's pronounced the communal hall it's a communal hall the communal hall offered shelter and a place for council meetings the communal hall this is a communal hall was also a place for storytellers or birds scopes who shared orally the stories of the anglo sections and their gods and heroes the anglo sections valued storytelling as equal to fighting hunting and farming types of anglo section verse scopes often recited heroic poetry recounts the achievements of warriors involved in great battles elegiac poetry sorrowful laments that mourn the deaths of love war and the loss of the past grave goods items buried with bodies archaeologists archaeologists can learn a lot from old burial sites when anglo section died their bodies were either cemented cemented or buried in a grave belongings buried with the dead person for use in the next month provide evidence of the jobs people did men's grave include knives and spears which suggest hunting fighting and farming women's graves include tools used for sewing and weaving showing that women made cloth and clothing the grave of a king like the ship burial at satan who was filled with treasures weapons and armor one child grave in essex had the bones of a dog in it perhaps a pet bbc the coming the coming of christianity the coming of christianity in 432 the whole of celtic carland was converted by patrick a romanized britain in 563 a group of irish monks led by a soldier and abbot named columba columba established a monastery on the island of lona of the west coast of scotland later the roman church began to send missionaries throughout europe in 597 saint augustine converted the king of england and established a monastery at the canterbury by 650 most of england was christian in name if not in fact christianity and literature the church brought education education and written literature to england monks established churches monasteries and libraries monks recorded the duplicated illuminated manuscripts at first only written in latin oral literature was transcribed into written form monks preserved not only latin and greek classics but also popular literature beyond anglo section had two alphabet the roman and runic it's a picture of uh, alphabet anglo section had two alphabet the roman and runic it's anglo section alphabet uh, the children collectively called the scholar were taught by monks it was the role of the priest to educate his flock the students wrote the days passes on to a wake tablet from dictation and committed it to memory writing was not always part of the curriculum the curriculum therefore was religious in content and functional in song schools where the basics were taught students then learned singing anglo section manuscript the danish invasion due to rising population a limited farmland many scandinavians the norse and the danes took to the seas the vikings in 18 1800 danish raiders attacked britain the norse settled in north humbria scotland wales and ireland the danes targeted eastern and southern england here is a picture registered viking vessel anglo section registered viking vessels uh, viking raids from the ferry of the northmen o lord deliver us sect and 
plundered monasteries, stole sacred religious objects, burned entire communities, murdered villagers, halted the growth of learning. By the middle of the 9th century, most of England had fallen. The Vikings called their uh, territory Danlo. Alfred the Great, only the section kingdom of Wessex managed to fight the Danes to a stand still. In 1871, Alfred ascended to the Wessex throne. Alfred resisted, resisted for the Danish encroachment. A. 1886 truce formally divided England. The Danish ruled the east and north. The Saxon ruled the south. Alfred translated the British history and other works from Latin into English to make them more accessible as well as instituted the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, a history of England from the earliest days through one Danish contributions. Danish built their Danlo communities as military, fortress and trading centers, generated growth of English towns, expanded English vocabulary as Norse words crept into the language. For example, law is Danish and its use reflects the Dan's interest in legal procedures. The Norman conquest Towards the end of the 10th century, the Danes increased attempts to recapture and widen Danlo and eventually forced the Witten to select a series of Danish kings. In 1042, the throne returned to a descendant of Alfred, King Edward the Confessor a Christian. Edward's association with the Normans weakened section power. Upon his death in 1066, Edward was the succeeded by Harold. William of Normandy challenged Harold's right to the throne and defeated Harold in the Battle of Hastings. William was crowned king on December 25, 1066, and that's all. That's all. Here is my class. And that's all about angle section field. Mm -hmm. Okay. If, dear students, if you want to get more uh, concept about angle section literature, then you can uh, study the book of history of English literature that is uh, included in your syllabus. You can have a uh, more knowledge, more concept about angle section period. Today, I have tried to. Uh, give you uh, the full conception, the lifestyle, and their uh, manners uh, through my lecture. Uh, and I think you will be benefited if you attend uh, if you uh, attend my lectures. And see you. And and thanks to you. See you. Till then, Allah peace.